My name is Martin Sevatne. I'm advisor for Shelter for NRC. This is the Norwegian Refugee Council. And we are providing assistance and solutions for refugees and internal displaced persons affected by armed conflict that have to flee. Uh, what does sustainable housing sustainability mean for you, particularly in, res in respect to your organization's work? We as an NRC, we provide, as part of our whole portfolio, shelter solutions, providing a home, a place to be for people that are on the flee, that have to run away from a conflict. And housing sustainability, we use not the word sustainability, but we use adequate. Adequate in a, is in the same way including aspects of economy, of livelihood, of culture, of social, but to find an adequate solution, even in a temporary environment, for people that need to be somewhere. Because where you are, where you live, this is your life. And experience has shown, and history has shown, that being affected by conflict is not a short-term thing. It can last up to many, many years. And it's very important that people are, during this time, have somewhere your life, can set their life around, and this needs to be adequate to standards, it has to be provide dignity, but also just a simple physical protection from the environment. What do you think the key questions and uh, areas of focus are in developing countries mm. in regards to housing sustainability? Mm. I would like to focus this answer just a bit more on the countries we work. These are countries affected by armed conflict, by war. The biggest challenge there is that it's not, it's a that situation in change, but housing is very permanent, it's very durable. But the, the entire situation around is dynamic and changing all the time. So the biggest challenge is to find and to build something durable, and even sometimes only tents or temporary transitional shelters have a certain permanency, because people are somewhere. And once people are somewhere settling, you create a very fact, and this is often having a problem with the entire situation around people that are still moving or have been forcibly been moved to, to a place or evicted and so on. So this is a, a big challenge, but also less the, the, the will, the political will by, by all the actors to, to create a permanent situation. But maybe on the more technical side, I think one of the biggest challenges is of course access to land and also to, to, to secure the tenure Mm -hmm. Because exactly in this situation, all laws, all rules, all regulations disappear. And then how can we secure that people can actually have a tenure there? Okay. So these, I would say, are the two biggest challenges. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, what do you think the unique sustainability challenges are when dealing specifically um, with informal settlements and low-income housing? And I guess in your case, um, with uh, transitional and temporary housing, and what do you think um, the greatest opportunities are um, in terms of the kind of interventions that can be made? Mm. I think the, the biggest challenge is to find what is adequate for the, for the solution, for the situation. So that we that provide a housing solution need to find out what is adequate. Adequate in terms of the physical construction standard the material, because this expresses social social value, social standard, but also adequate in terms of livelihood, when by just providing a, a place to be, a house, people mm -hmm. will not be able to, to make a living there, to survive, so we need to look at livelihood opportunities, because we can't just build a house and keep on feeding people. This is a, only a camp, where this is temporary possible, but this is not housing, this is not a durable solution, and uh, of course it needs to be uh, related to public infrastructure because it's not just a conglomeration of houses and some jobs but services. Life is about uh, services. You, your kids need to go to school, they need to be a health center and so on. Yeah, these are the things that, that we need to, to address in our programs. The, the, the adequate level to find the right level of all these kind of aspects of, of sustainable housing and this is related to economy, social, culture, and so on. Thanks. Okay, the last question is, how do you envision the role of the proposed network in advancing sustainable housing? 
I think this is a very good initiative coming up here because it gives us the chance to define a common language of sustainable housing. What, is, what does sustainable housing mean in direct program implementation? Other nets, networks, more on the shelter side, and the humanitarian shelter sites, are already going down the road that they start defining indicators. And indicators is just a, a language, a way of verifying, measuring your results, your outcome of your projects. And this network gives us actually this chance to define and say like, what does sustainable housing really means in, in program reality? How can we measure that something is sustainable? How can we verify that the money we got from donors and we used, that we actually produced results, that there's an, that there's an outcome on this? I think this is one of the, maybe the most important things, things for this network. And secondly, and it gives us the chance among practitioners, policy makers, research institutions, to discuss the very challenge between the common understanding of sustainability but and the very project in the very case. Because when organizations are implementing projects, you're basically left alone. You get the money, you have the handbooks and the policies, but now you need to implement and really do it. But then you're facing, in the very case, extreme challenges. And as an implementer, as you have the job to do, it's very difficult to find partners to discuss exactly the challenges there. And the network like this, based on common understanding, trust, and, and yeah, there, this gives us the chance to exactly bridge, bridge the gip, gap between the policies and the handbooks and the program reality. Great. And I'm looking forward to this goes online. Great. Thanks, Martin.